water viewers and welcome to our show. Today we're going to be talking to you about hydration and Ramadan. So we all know that during the holy month of Ramadan we're fasting for very long hours and hydration is really key because dehydration can actually cause so many problems such as drowsiness and headaches and actually loss of energy and because we are fasting for such long periods of time it's really key for us to focus on hydrating our bodies when we do break our fast and since the fasting or the breaking fast time is actually very limited you know we're very limited on the amount of fluids we can have where we can actually get our fluids from and also the amount of nutrients that we can get from our fluids to keep our bodies going throughout the day. So today we're going to be discussing different ways that you can get your fluid needs and maybe what are your actual fluid requirements you know for your different bodies. So we've all heard about the 8 by 8 rule. So 8 glasses of water for all the 8 hours during the day. And of course that's beneficial and that makes sense to all of us but we all come in different shapes and sizes. And our bodies require more fluids the bigger we are. Now you need to keep in mind that your body is made up of about 60% water so we need to make sure we're replenishing these fluids all throughout the day
very important to bear in mind that not all of us stay at home all throughout the fasting time. Therefore, the people that are walking outside or are moving around are probably prone to losing some of the fluids in their body through sweat. Therefore, it's very important that we also replenish those fluids when we break our fast to make sure that we do avoid dehydration and to make sure that we also get our metabolism going. So now the, the, like the most excellent thing about water is that it actually does boost your metabolism. So please stay tuned so we can talk about all the health benefits of water, where you can actually get your fluids from because you don't necessarily need to be getting them from water. heard us say water does actually increase your metabolism and when you're fasting for long periods of time and with the upcoming days so towards the middle of the holy month of Ramadan you'll probably realize that your metabolism has begun to slow down because you're really not getting much food and the excellent or the best way to boost your metabolism is to have water so research has indicated that it will boost your metabolism by around 30% so you can anticipate maybe an extra 100 calorie burn during um, the day, which really isn't much to a lot of people, but it could be beneficial. And the benefits of water really do go past just boosting your metabolism. Water does also help you avoid overeating during the meals. So a lot of research has shown us that people that do consume water or any fluid half an hour before having their meal will actually tend to eat less, which could be a good idea for your meal during futur. So if you are having futur, maybe having a cup of leban or having a cup of water before or as you're breaking your fast, going to pray and then coming back, that will give you around a 20, 15 minute window to feel a bit fuller, then you won't tend to overeat at futur. And definitely maybe you could avoid the fatty foods that could actually upset your stomach later on. Having another half glass or one glass of water or leban or whatever fluid you have choice could actually make you feel fuller throughout the day, which could help you avoid eating those sweets that we usually have after futur. They're usually high in calories and they don't really give us much nutritional value. Now, if you are someone that's really addicted to caffeine and you feel you need to have it, replenishing the fluids that you probably lose from your caffeine intake is really crucial. And I say for every one cup of caffeinated beverage, have a cup of water. And always bear in mind that coffee, tea, green tea, as well as chocolates do contain caffeine. So for any one of these that you have, try to replenish them with an extra cup of water. So we have more on water to cover, please stay tuned. We said that not only water will contribute to the fluid requirement that you need and that's really good because a lot of times you don't want to fill up your stomach with only water you also do want some calories and some nutrients and this is where fruits and vegetables really do come into play so sometimes we tend to forget that the food we eat really does contain natural amounts of water in it and they will compensate for our fluid needs so you don't necessarily need to get your water from eight glasses of water. Like we said, you could get them from other beverages and you could get them from fruits and vegetables. So if you're someone that really doesn't enjoy drinking much water or you feel like your appetite is very limited during the breaking fast period, then make sure you have lots of salad, lots of greens and veggies, again, lots of fruits in replacement of sweets. 
And with fluids, you really also need to be careful because many fluids do pack calories that are actually unnecessary. So something like a Qamar al drink will pack around 250 calories per cup, which is quite a great deal. Other sweetened beverages could pack anywhere from around 120 to 180 calories, really depending on how much of the syrup or the powder you add to the liquid, so how concentrated the liquid is. So it's really important for you to keep in mind that maybe water would be a better choice if you are going to ingest a fluid because then it doesn't have many calories. Leban is another excellent choice. It does come at around 100 calories for the low fat kind, but at least you're getting many minerals, you're getting some protein that will keep you full as well as calcium. And then another great beverage that you can have besides Leban is lentil soup. So we tend to forget that these soups and especially lentil soup that's really high in protein could give you around 150 calories per cup. Again, you are getting nutrients, you are getting fluids, so you are kind of hitting two birds in one stone, which is a great deal because you also don't want to be filling your stomach up with water all throughout the food time and then not eating enough calories and trying to, you know, compensate all your food by night time. It's really very important for you to keep all these facts in mind. Anytime you do feel thirsty, do have water because that is an indication that your body needs to replenish more fluids. During this time of the month, try to stay away from the sun and the high heat to avoid sweating and losing all these fluids because it really is going to be very hard to replenish them with our limited hours. We really hope you enjoyed today's episode and we'll see you all next time.